Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so welcome to the Housing Commission April 3rd, 2024, regular Housing Commission meeting. This is a hybrid meeting with Housing Commission members, city staff, and members of the public participating in the Oak Conference Room and via Zoom. I will call the meeting to order at 1841. Yeah. I mean, 6.41 p.m. Sorry, military, military time. time. <laughs> uh, I would like to introduce staff and housing commission members present. Uh, housing manager, Tim Wong, management analyst, Adam Patterson, and management analyst, Ariana Milton. And now we have a commissioner roll call, commissioner Campos. Present. Commissioner Leach. Present. Commissioner Merriman. Here. I'm here, Chair Nat. Commissioner Pimento. And Commissioner Putillo. And Vice Chair Walker. Present. Kim, would you like to provide instruction to the Housing Commission and members of the public on how the meeting will proceed? Okay, thank you, Chair Nat. And members of the Housing Commission, welcome everyone to the April 3rd regular meeting of the Housing Commission, and thank you for attending. So staff will engage cameras and microphones to make presentations and respond to the members of the Housing Commission. For members of the public who are in attendance and wish to provide public comment on an item on tonight's agenda, after the chair calls for public comment on the item you wish to speak on for virtual participants, Please engage and raise hand. Feature at the bottom of the screen for those who are calling from a landline or cell phone. Please press star nine for those in person. Please complete a speaker card and bring to my desk. This, that concludes the instructions and I return the meeting to the chair. Thank you. Under public comment, the public may address the Housing Commission on any subject not listed on the agenda. Each speaker may address the Housing Commission once and the public comment for a limit of three minutes. You are not required to provide your name or city of residence, but it is helpful. The Housing Commission cannot act on items not listed on the agenda, and therefore the Housing Commission cannot respond to non-agenda issues brought up under public comment, other than to provide general information. Tim, do we have any public comment? No public comment. So I guess we don't need that. No, no public comment. Uh, under regular business, the Housing Commission received information of presentations in addition to considering policy matters and administrative actions. First, we have item D1 to approve the Housing Commission meeting minutes for February 7th, 2024. Are there any clarifying questions from the Housing Commission on item D1? Item D1 is now uh, open for public comment. Tim, do we have any public comment? No public comments. This item is now open for Housing Commission clarifying questions and discussion. Will it work if I, if I abstain? You're okay if you abstain. You're okay if I Oh, I'm fine. Okay, yeah. thanks. Okay. Do we have motions and second for the stated motion? There's no other. So moved. Second. Yeah. Can I also assume I was in Okay. It's pretty old. Oh, me right now. Yeah. I think it's so. The second motion was uh, by Shawan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we have a motion by Commissioner Leach, seconded by Vice Chair Walker to approve the Housing Commission meeting minute for February 7th, 2024. Uh, we will call the vote. Commissioner Powers? Commissioner Leach? Aye. Commissioner Mayor? Same. Chair Matt? Aye. Commissioner Pimentel? Absent. Commissioner Portillo? Absent. Vice Chair Walker? Aye. Motion passes. So this is item B2. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay. Will you come get me in the menu? I will certainly come get you. Next, yes, we have item B2 to recommend approval for the commitment of 3.6 million below market rate housing funds for the Habitat Humanity of Greater San Francisco Habitat. Proposal to acquire the property located at 335 Pierce Road for the construction of affordable for sale residential units. Management analyst Adam Patterson will introduce, introduce the item. This item is now oh, 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 Adam. Oh, 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 yeah. Give the but let's also let the record show that uh Commissioner Merriman accused herself in a conflict. Okay. Good evening, uh, Housing Commissioner, staff, members of the public. Uh, my name is Adam Patterson. I'm a management analyst of the housing team at City of Meadow Park. Uh, I'd also like to introduce online uh, Maureen Sedone, Robert Smith, and Ashley Spooner Choi from Habitat for Humanity, Greater San Francisco. Uh, tonight, we're going to talk about Habitat to know what proposal with the 335 Pierce Road. So, 335 Pierce Road is a parcel of land located in the Bell Haven neighborhood. Uh, it is just over one third of an acre and currently consists of a fourplex and an adjacent vacant lot. Hopefully, you see on the images there on the slide. Uh, some background on the site. In 2015, Big Penn purchased the land with the intention of building affordable housing. As part of the city's 2020 NOFA uh, notice of funding availability process, Big Penn requested $3.6 million in below market rate housing funds to develop the site. Uh, this proposal included demolishing the existing fourplex and building 12 two-bedroom ownership units at the low income or 80% AMI level. Uh, in November of 2021, City Council held a study session to consider the proposal and directed staff to use that $3.6 million on this project. Fast forward to today, uh, that project did not move forward as intended uh, and Habitat is negotiating a bid to purchase the land and the two parties have executed a letter of intent as part of that process. Habitat uh, is proposing to own development the site. Uh, and one just key difference is part of that preliminary uh, due diligence and, and design is uh, slightly fewer units, uh, but, but larger units, which the city and the housing element recognize uh, that larger units are, are much needed in, this, in, our, in our BMR portfolios. Uh, and again, the final design has yet to be determined during the design process. Uh, just a brief overview of the financial summary. Uh, as part of the proposal, Habitat will be borrowing from several funding sources in addition to the city, including Stanford's Affordable Housing Fund, Calhoun, and others. Uh, again, these numbers are preliminary, but the approximate cost and the United States contribution, 10 units, as you can see here, uh, total project cost of 9.7 million at 10 units comes out to about 970,000 per unit. Uh, the city contribution of $3.6 million, we're looking at 360,000 per unit, again, at 10 units. Uh, so you can see the impact of the, of the city's milk on this project. Uh, again, final design, due diligence is, is still in process, but uh, this is just a little bit of a picture of what the impact of these funds would be. The housing element point um, is described in staff report. We, this proposal touched on a number of goals, policies, and programs that are included in our adopted housing element uh, update. We won't cover them in detail here right now, but you can see uh, some of the ones that staff have highlighted uh, that this project will be uh, touching upon. So, next steps in the proposed timeline uh, are our next step, staff, here is to bring this to City Council for consideration on April 16th to the recommendation from the Housing Commission. Some other milestones would be the sale of the property uh, later this summer and a construction timeline in fall 2025 and fall 2027. So, reiterating the staff recommendation, staff recommends the approval for the commitment of $3.6 million in below market rate housing funds for Habitat for Humanity, Greater San Francisco's proposal to acquire the property located at 335 Pierce Road for the construction of affordable or sale residential units. 
This can include a staff's presentation, staff and representatives from have that are available to answer questions. And I return the meeting to the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Uh, this item is now open open for public comment. Tim, do we have any public comment? No uh, public comment. So then uh, this item is now open for housing commission clarifying questions and discussion. I, I just have one. Um, it sounds like, um, I mean, it sounds like it's it's just definitely needed and Habitat or Humanity has a, a good track record. I, I'm wondering um, why, what, what happened with the mid pen um, not following through with building it? Do we know? Was it, is there, I guess my concern is there, is there, is there, a, 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 is there like an in, in, in built-in issue that's going to stop in the future development? Or was it just a matter of priorities? Or, or is it not something we want? Yeah. Uh, staff is unaware of why MidPen uh, decided to proceed forward, but it's good that we have Habitat for Humanity uh, taking over the project right? that is relatively similar. Yeah. yeah, Tim, I'm, I'm happy to speak to it as well, um, if that's okay. helpful. You know, um, MidPen is a really strong colleague and ally to Habitat, and this is a really small project. Mostly what MidPen done is, it does is very much larger projects, as you know. Um, and so for this project, there originally was going to be a small uh, ownership project, um, but now that they're sort of um, the this just sort of ended up being a better way to do it, if you will, because we can also come in with the mortgages um, for the homeowners that give them a zero down, 0% interest mortgage. Um, and so the partnership to purchase the project from them, do what we do best, which is to build multifamily housing um, that's a home ownership product. And for them to stay our ally and partner with helping with relocating the tenants that are there and you know doing what they do, it's sort of a, a great way we all work together. And so... Um, I hope that addresses your question. There wasn't a problem um, per se with the the site itself. I mean, the, the site does need to be demolished. And so there's some time and effort that will go into that, but it'll end up uh, lending itself to becoming a much larger um, development with a lot more opportunity for the community to benefit from 100% affordable home ownership. Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. That yeah. Thanks, Julie. Okay, so just to clarify, the project was not sizable for Minton to take on. Yeah, they had a, a, a I don't want to speak for them, but they did have a small, they had, did have a, a partnership before with a small nonprofit homeownership uh, developer that was going to potentially do this together with them. That organization um, is not doing that work right now or doing that um, anymore. And so this ended up creating an opportunity for them to call Habitat and for us to talk about becoming the partner. Awesome. Um, secondly, do you have any mock-ups of what the new project is going to look like? Um, no, we haven't begun the design process um, yet. What we try to do, obviously, is build really beautiful um, and a steaming housing for our folks. Um, you know, so we will be begin the, the design process very soon. Um, actually, it's part of the reason why we want to kind of get moving so we can get that design process, get the the um, all of the, the work done to entitle the project to, to be built and then to be able to um, work with the design team. But if you look on our website or if you look at what's behind me, um, this is a very large project behind me in my picture, but, um, you know, we really fit, build things that fit into the character of neighborhoods where we're building and designing. We also are really committed to doing um, almost all of our last three projects have been um, net zero energy projects. So they're really environmentally friendly. Um, if you've seen any of the, we're beginning to design the, the project that we're doing in Menlo Park also over on Independence. So soon we'll be able to show you some of those schematics, but we'll work with you know, skilled architects to do build a, a really beautiful project. Okay. Uh, next, I would like to ask, uh, I understand that you all have the intent to borrow funding from other sources. Has that yeah. already been secured? Yeah, just, just to clarify, we don't borrow sources. So we're, we aren't gonna, we're not going to pay you back. 
Um, this this would be investing in the project. We we basically are a developer for the city to develop and build the affordable housing in their community and to meet their RENA numbers um, and to provide this opportunity. The nice thing about Habitat is we also come in as the mortgage lender with that zero down, zero percent interest mortgage, and we cap folks uh, monthly payments at 30 percent. Um, so this would be the first securing of the project money to move the project forward to actually buy the site. The money that you're giving us tonight, a very small amount of it will be to help get the site ready, but this will not help. You know, we have to go secure the funding to build the project after that. So this is a site acquisition um, project right now. Um, we also were able to get the money that uh, the Stanford money that was committed to the project before and they've recommitted it to this project. So we'll put that $1.5 million towards it. In June, there'll be a Cal Home application out, hopefully, from the state. We will apply for that money, and that's up to two fifty dollars a door um, for uh, mortgage uh, mortgage assistance um, and some pre-development money, so there'll be a mix there. So we have so sources that we've used very successfully and that we very successfully secured for our projects um, that kind of come in with uh, money from the city, money from the county, from Measure K, um, Cal home. And then of course, 50% of the costs are, are fi funded by the mortgages of the mortgage, uh, of the homeowners that we, we lend them over time, um, as they pay down their mortgage. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm just wondering, do we have 3.6 million in the MOFA? Do we have that? Yes, we do. Actually, since 2021, to be technical staff, uh, was directed by the city council to use 3.6 million. So we didn't uh, commit or award, but we set it aside. And so now it's uh, going from previously what was mid pen to to Habitat for Humanity. So it was always on the books for say for that for this purpose. So yes, long long explanation. So we didn't have the money. Yes. And we're not foreseeing any other future requests. You're not foreseeing any future requests from any other organization. Well, we still have a little additional, uh, we still have uh, additional uncommitted funds in our BMR fund. Uh, there's a NOFA that we're working through right now. And we are also expecting a fairly large payment uh, back uh, due to uh, financing from Gateway Rising. So okay. there'll be some additional uncommitted funds. All right, this, you know, that all the money, there's only one one project and I have enough for maybe other possible future. That's what's my no. concern. There, there is adequate funding for this project and future projects. Okay. Yeah, remember and, this is, this money is not, is for the land, so we will be trying to raise the money for the, the building of the homes, et cetera. Then we're making a re uh, recommendation for, so do we have a motion or to proceed I, with this? I move to, uh, what are we saying? I move to approve uh, the commitment of the 3.6 million BMR funds for Habitat for Humanity Greater San Francisco Bay Area. Do we have a second? Okay. It's to be specific to make the recommendation. It's a recommendation. Make the recommendation. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. Yes. right, right. Sorry, I was trying to read this. I missed Very recommend. No. Sorry, but can you just clarify too that it's not a borrowing? Um, that it's it's actually you a grant. Correct yes. in the verbiage. Yeah. Approval of commitment. Yeah. I said recommend yeah. the approval of the commitment of. I just want to make sure yeah. an important clarification. <laughs> yes, thank you. And just to outline, in we will be taking the commitment to the council for their consideration April 16th. But the funding agreement, understanding it's not alone that it was mentioned that in the staff report, but uh, we will be working with Habitat. And whatever form that funding agreement takes will be taken back to the council at a later date. But just to um, clarify the city's next step, if, if the council accepts Under um, the commitment. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. 
Vice Chair Walker seconded. Yes. Yeah. yeah, she did. Uh, so we have a motion by Commissioner Leach, seconded by Vice Chair Walker, uh, to make a recommendation of approval for the commitment of $3.6 million below market rate EMR housing funds for the Habitat for Humanity of Greater San Francisco Habitat proposal to acquire the property located at 335 Pierce Road for the construction of affordable for sale residential units. I will now do a roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Campos? Aye. Commissioner Leach? Aye. Commissioner Merriman. She recused. She recused from this item. Chair O'Nath. Aye. Commissioner Pimentel, absent. Commissioner Portillo, absent. Vice Chair Walker. Aye. The motion passes. Okay. So let's go to updates. Thank um, you all very much. We really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. One. Thanks so much. We will we will exit and let you carry on with your meeting. Thanks so much. Take all care. Right. Okay. Bye bye. Enjoy your evening. Yeah. Thank you, Marina. No, let me go get uh Oh, so now we're going to uh, commissioner updates. Do we have any individual commissioner updates? I believe there is a fair coming. Yeah, I'll provide that as part of the uh, staff okay. updates. Okay. So, okay, then do we have any recommendations for future agenda items? No, but give us me to ask a question from our prior last. I know we were discussing a letter on RFPs. Yes. Where are you with that? I sent it to. Oh, yeah, because we couldn't get it, right? Yes. So I have a letter, and as part of the updates, I was. Um, um, we'll just launch into staff updates. Okay. Um, okay. Because we did meet last week, staff has a number of updates, but I'll start with uh, that. Um, in regards to the RFP or, or the parking lot development process, in speaking to the city clerk, um, if there is the letter that can be presented to the city council, but every commission can do an annual, what is called, I guess, a reach out to the commission, excuse me, to the council, where the representative of the housing commission can directly address the city yeah. council. Okay. So those happen between June and August. And so um, one of the things we were, our staff was looking at was in May, understanding that typically it's the chair, uh, but in May, the, uh, the housing commission will be electing a new chair. But as part of that May, if, the housing commission is interested in that reach out to the council who they want to designate to address the council. That was going to be uh, a May item. Um, okay. So we have two items. Yeah, designation. But at that reach out, you can talk about the housing commission's uh, participation in the redevelopment and any suggestions the Housing Commission may have as part of the redevelopment of the parking lot sites, i.e. Um, maybe forego the feasibility study, have everything that Commissioner Pimentel mentioned. And, and those can be addressed as part of the reach out. So, um, can I add a little bit to that? Sure. I'm sorry. I've, I've done it before. Uh, oh, okay. In a couple different capacities. I've done it as the chair, and then it was a different year. Um, the chair and vice chair, we did it together. Um, so it really is something that there's some flexibility as to how the commission wants to approach it. And then it was always a good conversation before we went to do it so that there was 
really kind of trying to bring forth a little bit of the ethos or approach to which we're bringing our creativity and passion here at the commission and how we want to partner with the, uh, the council to see progress. So um, if it can be sequenced, that there's a nice conversation first, then I think it can be a rich opportunity. Uh, yes, thank you for that. So uh, thinking in May, the, the commission could designate the representatives, and then I would work, our staff would work with the city clerk to schedule a time with the council to to talk about that. So that's the update. And Thank you. I haven't, staff has not worked much with the letter at this point, uh -huh. thinking that the reach out would be a, a more appropriate venue or communication okay. style than submitting a letter. So the letter was just a draft, um, what kind of a uh, gathering of the thoughts that we all had, um, that, and that uh, Commissioner Penmentel was outlining. Um, so do we wanna, um, I don't know what the protocol would be. Do we, before the May meeting, do we wanna send, do you wanna send it around and see what people think if they wanna add to it or just have a meet, uh, discussion RL in May? <laughs> I think a live discussion. <laughs> Happy to produce, um, provide the letter. Okay. okay. Part of the packet, mm -hmm. and then the commission can discuss talking points or discussion yeah, points. But, but yeah, and then to provide direction to the referees. Yeah, and just to just as a jumping off, it use it as just a jumping off point for discussion. Just yeah. Okay. And once that's, that's idea. finalized or approved, then look for a council date. So, okay. um, so thank you for bringing that up. That is one of the items amongst many. And so, yes, um, May is Affordable Housing Month. So as part of it, um, the city will be having a housing resource fair where uh, it had invited a number of organizations to, to uh, man a booth, if you will, to, to so that Menlo Park residents can avail themselves talking to a live voice, if you will, about any housing need they they may have. So uh, invited housing providers, um, people that have, do housing rehab, um, housing services, if you will, um, such as legal and other word, uh, otherwise. Uh, that provide financial assistance for housing. And so um, as part of that, the, the housing fair is on the HLC calendar as part of Affordable Housing Month. It's scheduled for May 11th from one to four. And so staff has taken the liberty to reserve a spot at the Ivy Plaza in Bellhaven and um, secured some of the logistics such as tables, chairs, canopies, and we're looking uh, to partner with uh, library and community services for some children's activities while the younger parents are, are going to um, different tables. But wanted, staff wanted to take this opportunity so that uh, we may work since since outreach is part of the Housing Commission work plan, how staff can work with maybe the Housing Outreach yep. Subcommittee in, in doing outreach and maybe getting additional ideas about, like just right now, very preliminary, maybe even doing a lottery that they get raffle tickets, encourage them to visit different booths, have a raffle, win some prizes, things like that. So just to make it more engaging, but certainly welcome um, responses, ideas from the, the subcommittee. Is there a budget for that provided from the city or is it something you have to source on our own? Um, I've been talking about a budget, and so stay tuned. But as part of that, I was thinking that maybe staff could have um, offline conversations with the subcommittee okay. um, with greater details. It's it's kind of in the initial stages, but 
uh, have done some basic outreach and just basic preparation. I know it's offline. It's just here. Huh? Uh, have we thought about like music or anything or? I, mean, uh, I know it's offline. I, it's yeah, just... haven't gotten that far yet. Okay. It, it, it would be great. Um, and so, uh, yeah, those okay. are certainly things, activities, if you will, um, to to uh, think about. Absolutely. Um, so that's with the housing resource fair. Secondly, uh, Last month, the city council met to discuss their goals and priorities. Okay. And so housing remains a top priority or a top goal for them. And as part of it, uh, the community development uh, department was tasked with three main activities. Number one, development of the parking lots. Number two is anti-displacement um, measures. And number three is revising the BMR guidelines. So uh, CDD, the Community Development Department, is um, underway to implement those programs. I have a question regarding the parking lots. Is it okay to ask? Or yeah, sure. Are do we know for sure that the parking lots can be developed on? There has been some uh, preliminary feasibility just to see a what easements. So we're still doing some of that uh, basic work um, to see which parking lots may be more feasible than others. And so we're going, uh, the city's going through that process okay. at this time. Yeah. Understanding that want at least 345 units uh, per the housing element. We want at least that many units. But which parking lot is more feasible than, than or, or better than the others uh, at this point, still going through that process. Oh. Um, also, um, just to point out on April 16th, um, when the 335 Pierce NOFA goes to council, council is also making uh, appointments to the commission. So uh, Commissioner Pimentel, uh, his term ends at the end of this month. So there will be a new commission member come May. Just wanted to point that out. And lastly, uh, you and staff will work with the, the housing commission, but um, there are some BMR vacancies that are uh, currently at middle spring line, maybe not spring. Anyways, there are some BMR vacancies in existing units. So we're gonna do a marketing blast to contact everyone on their interest list. But uh, bigger than that, if you will, is uh, there are two developments in uh, Bayfront, Lou May, as you may, um, you might know it as Menlo Uptown and Menlo Portal, which is now called Vasara. Um, those units are, those apartments are coming online. Uh, Menlo Uptown or Lou May has uh, 67 BMR units. Okay. And then the other has approximately 45. So they're not all coming online at once, but marketing for those uh, units shall be happening in the next uh, couple weeks. Is this for rental? Rental, yes. And how many all are different what the apart? Excuse me? How many are 80? How many are 30? Um, no. Not off the top of my head, but it's all, they are for very low, low and moderate income. Uh, and um, unit sizes range from studio to twos. But I don't have is a, a matrix, that? if you will. And is there like a witness for that? No. So what's going to happen is so the rental we don't have the witness, but for the purchase we have on the list. Yes, we have the legacy list. But for okay. what's going to happen with uh, Lume and Vasaria is we will market it to everyone. Okay. Say you, we're still finalizing the dates, but it'll be a given time if you're interested. Um, submit for a lottery. A lottery will occur that will give everyone their 
priority, if you will. Okay. And then they'll start going through the leasing process. The rental uh, will go through the underwriting, if you will, with the property manager. And then if they approve the tenant for rental, then uh, the city will income certify. Okay. So, so that is uh, coming up, but to be on the uh, lookout or if there's anyone interested that you know, um, suggest that they fill out an interest list, which uh, staff can send out to the housing commission. It's an interest form to make sure they get on the interest form. So when we start marketing, uh, we will do an email blast to the interest list, but we will market through uh, city social media. So there will be other ways to uh, be notified or or get some information, but just wanted uh, the Housing Commission to be aware of that. What happened to the um, company? I believe her name was Robin and she had a colleague and they presented uh, they were supposed to facilitate the BMR. Uh, we're working housing in. We're working with uh, actually the email blast is is gonna they're gonna issue or send out the email blast via Mailchimp or something. Okay, like so that. they're fully on board. Yes, and see. they're gonna do the income certifications. Okay, uh, we're preparing some templates to send out as part of that e blast. Uh, the city has certain colors and, and uh, but uh, putting together that template uh, for housing ink to send out. Okay. Yeah. That's a good news. Yes. Good. And that concludes staff's updates. I, I just want to have one comment. The city clerk uh, will be sending out a reminder about schedule, you know, attendance of all commissions and things like that. Uh, the dates, times, and also reminders to uh, the participation issue. So just uh, watch out for that the email from the city club. That's it. So I shall adjourn the meeting. I was going to add on a bit quickly to the staff updates. Uh, just for the record, we were with Commissioner Pimentel's last meeting. He's not here to thank him in person, so we'll put it on camera. Just thank him for his service to the commission and to the city. So uh, I shall adjourn the meeting at night, 1918. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Okay. That's the end. Thank you all for being Sorry. 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 Sorry.